All right, so here's your new dishwasher. You must be excited. I am. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with our hot water supply to the dishwasher. Okay. You've got a pipe right here that feeds hot water to the kitchen sink. It has a shutoff like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this shutoff with one that looks very similar, but it has two branches. This one will go off to the kitchen sink, this one to the dishwasher. Now, I've got the water shut off down in the basement, and I just need to break these connections. All right, so here's our new shutoff valve, and when I make a compression connection, normally I would take this nut at the bottom and put it onto the pipe. The next is this brass ring, it's called a ferrule, and that fits over the copper pipe like so. And then when this nut is tightened up, it compresses the ferrule so hard that it fuses right down into that pipe. Now, on this existing pipe, we already have a ferrule and a nut, and that ferrule is fully compressed into the pipe. So I'm going to reuse this nut and ferrule with our new valve and tighten it up. All right, I'm going to just make the connection with the old kitchen sink supply hose onto the new valve on one of the branches. Okay. So why do I need a valve there? Well, you really want to have shutoff valves under every single fixture for service. Someday, the faucet will need repair or the dishwasher. For a hot water supply to the dishwasher, we're going to use this stainless steel braided hose. Now, on our shutoff valve right here, we have a nut and a ferrule on the branch. We're not going to use this nut and ferrule either because the hose actually has a nut that's already on it. So we don't need the ferrule for this one? Right, it's still called a compression connection, but you don't need the ferrule, and this will make a nice watertight seal. Next thing we're gonna pay attention to is the discharge hose from the dishwasher. Now normally, if you had a garbage disposer, there's a branch right on the side where this thing fits perfectly, but you don't. So you have this pipe right here, it's called a tailpiece. They make a tailpiece designed exactly for this connection called a dishwasher tailpiece, and we're gonna replace this with this. There's a bottom nut too I have to loosen. Now at the top, we have a gasket we're going to add right here. It's a special top gasket fits right there and the nut comes up. But I still need a nut at the bottom, so just hold on to that piece. I'm going to actually reuse this nut. Now this nut has a nut and a gasket all in one. That'll fit right here and we are ready to reconnect it. All right, let's just tip this back. There's a couple of connections on the front bottom of this dishwasher that are easy to be made if I tip it back. One is the water connection. There's an adapter elbow right here. I've already added Teflon tape to it, and I have to thread it in right here. Okay. I want to be careful not to mangle the threads. All right, I want to stop it right about there because I've got to feed my water line. Remember the stainless braided line like this. It has to fit exactly into this trough between here and the floor, and then I'll make my connection right there. All right, so that's ready to go on the water. So now we have to think about the electrical. I'm going to connect this heavy-duty appliance plug right into this junction box right here. And we'll be ready to install. We have an electrical connection to make. You'd think it'd be simple, right? It's three wires to three wires. On the unit, we've got black, which is hot, white is neutral, and green is the ground. But on this appliance plug, look at this. It's two gray wires with copper and one green. How do we know which one goes to which? We have a 50% chance of getting it wrong. Well, on any appliance plug like this, if you look carefully, there's a smooth side right here and a rib side. I don't know if you can see that right there. See the ribs on the side right there? The smooth side is the hot, and that goes to black. Boy, you really got to pay attention. You do. It's a polarized plug. It's pretty important. Okay, and finally the ground. 
Now we have to fit this water line under that very narrow groove underneath the dishwasher. So I've taped it into place. Okay. And now we're ready to slide the dishwasher in. Let's not scratch the floor, lift it, and there's our water line. All right. So now I need to secure the dishwasher to the underside of the countertop and level it. All right, so that clamp is tight. Now what I also did was to secure this hose as high as I could get it up inside the cabinet. I want to make it so that this sink ever had a backup. All that nasty water wouldn't go this way and go back into your dishwasher. That's a good tip. All right, Kelly, water's back on. Any leaks? Nope, no leaks. We get leaks. lucky again. We did. <laughs> Plug in the electricity. Okay. Got it. All right, let me show you what you got here. Okay. There's a power button right here. Mm-hmm. Makes a little jingle when it starts. Okay. And there's some buttons right here. Normally, you'll hit that one. Go. Normal. All right. There we go. All right. And there you go. You wow. have a dishwasher. Isn't that cool? I have a dishwasher. <laughs> I'm actually excited about doing my dishes tonight. Mm -hmm.